What's going on people, it's Casey from www.casey-sounds.com Today's video is, as you can see from the title, is getting started in Logic Pro X. So the reason for me doing this video is because I've had a few people ask me how to get started. Basically, I've been using Logic for a while now and I'm my way around it and I just want to help people who's just starting out, basically beginners. It's always, it's always good to help others. So yeah, let's just get into this and I'll show you, show you what you can do. If you click on Logic Pro, you wait for it to load up, click File, and you'll click New, and this will bring up an empty project. So for me, I've got my instrument already set up for pianos to be um, instantiated straight away. You can choose whatever you want to choose to put in there. You can leave it empty, or you can just go straight in. So I'm just going to go to keys, click on stereo, or if you wanted to, and you're recording, uh, like guitars or whatever it is you're using, you can click that, you can go to drummer, you can go to external MIDI, guitar and bass, I don't know what that, that's all about there, it looks like it's just audio, yeah, it's audio isn't it, obviously. So yeah, I want to stick to a software instrument, and I only want one track for now. If you wanted to do more, you can. And I'm gonna click create. This is going to output one or two, and then click create. So this will come up straight away, which is the keys. So what you should do next, or what I normally do, is save the project. So go to save as, and then go on to Your logic folder, which should be there, and then you save it. So I'm going to save this as getting started in Logic Pro X. What I like to do is save it as a folder and click on audio files so any files that you've got that audio will be in that folder anything that's in your EXS it's going to be in that folder anything using ultra beat the samples will be in one place so you just click on them and check them anything that you want to save in that project click make sure you click it because if you move that file to a new folder and you haven't clicked these then when you come to open it at a later date Every, all your stuff's gonna be all over the place, so you ain't gonna have you're gonna have to go around searching and putting in searches in the in the box and trying to find your stuff and you don't want to do that. Just make it nice and simple and easy for yourself and click those boxes. So we're saving that. So that's saved as a new folder. So this there's a blank screen now, you're thinking to yourself like what, what am I supposed to do now? If you're new to making music, it's kinda of hard to just jump in and, and um, get started. So what you can do is go to your loops and just draw some inspiration from, from your loops. Uh, I'm gonna click on Urban and go to Beats and see what we've got down here. So all you need to do is just click on these and it will play. I like that because it sounds quite, um, reminds me of Timberland. Try a drum, see what I do. Perfect. So grab that, drop it into your uh, your edit window. It will ask you if you want to import it. You'll click import. It'll change it to 66. So we're going to make a four bar loop. So to do that, what I've done here is highlighted it, click all, the little plus sign will come up, you drag it across, now you've got a four bar, a four bar loop. If you highlight those together and then do the same again, that'll give you an eight bar loop. If you highlight the whole of that loop now, press command and U, 
that's a shortcut for to loop the whole section of what you've highlighted it might be different on yours it all depends on what you've changed your preferences to but that can all be done in there so now you've got your loop play your loop you're thinking oh what can i do next if you're a keys player you can play some keys in or if you prefer to to draw them in you can draw your notes in and you will do that by pencil draw your box go in and draw some notes in but I'd prefer to play it in so now you've got your basic loop your 8 bar loop you can move on to recording MIDI so to record MIDI you can you can do it two ways you can either hit record here oh, you can do it a couple of ways you can hit record here or you can hit record on your actual uh, numeric keypad, key, keypad, <laughs> your numeric keypad, or you can freestyle and play something in while it's playing. And then you can press shift and R, which will record what you've played. It will bring up what you've just played. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press record on the keypad numeric keypad and then record something in and then build a beat that way and then we we'll move on to the next thing so we've got that in there it didn't play the first That would do. We can duplicate that like I showed you. And if you want to, you can highlight both and press J, which will join all those files. So now you've got two files building your track. Next, you want to add maybe a bass line. So you go to your instrument, so it would be on the fader channel, choose a bass. Let's go for the EXS24 simple sine wave. And I didn't press record that time, so what I'll do is press Shift and R, and that will be the duplicate that again press J done maybe want to add another melody you can that's just a way to build your beats if you if you're not a player then you can just go to your loops and just choose whatever because you've got so much selection there you can just choose strings if you wanted to and drop some strings in there you could just build up your um, build your beat like that basically what I should have mentioned before I started all this is make sure that your IOs are set up properly. So I'm using a Sapphire Pro DS4, DSP, DS, yeah, that one. And you wanna make sure your output device is set to whatever your interface is and your, your import and your output. The buffer size, mine's on 1024 at the moment. Doesn't need to be that high really. This. The higher it is, the, the more latency you're gonna have when you're playing your keys. So if you go to 64, then there's hardly be any latency when you're playing the keys in. But if you're using a lot of plugins like different soft synths and stuff like that, then you're gonna to need to go a bit, you're gonna need a bit more buffer size just so you don't start getting glitching when you're playing back and stuff like that. But bear in mind, the higher the buffer size, the more latency you're gonna have. So yeah, make sure you, you do that before you start your session. And if you're mixing and stuff, then have a higher buffer size. So moving on, you've got your, your loops, you've made your beat, and now you want you want to you want to hear that beat on your on your phone, or you want to send that beat to uh, your friends, family, whoever. 
or client if you're if you're selling beats mixing or whatever we go down to bounce and bounce regions in place this allows you to bounce the files or the whole song as one file mp3 or, or WAV file or you can press command and B and that'll bring up the same box so here I've clicked on PCM and mp3 which will allow me to to bounce both mp3 and WAV file uh, the WAV file is there or AIFF or CAF I'm not 100% sure on what the difference is between the lot I think they're, they're waving up AIFF for quite close but I always just stick with WAV files I call it WAV um, 24 bit resolution sample rate 44.1 kilohertz CD quality file type in the leave you don't want to split it because when you split it you're going to have two different files left and right when you send it to someone so you don't need to do that keep it in the leave different that comes into mastering so I won't worry too much about that add it to your project because then you have your bounce file in a bounces folder when it's bounced which I'll show you in a minute and you can you have the option of hearing it in real time when you bounce your file or you can do it offline which means you won't be able to hear it real time is good because if you're doing if you're doing mixing or you're doing a you just want to hear it back while it's being bounced you might hear something during that mix or during the bounce down that you want to change so you can just press escape stop it do what you need to do and then, and then, and then bounce it again i don't include the audio till i've done it before and for some reason i don't know if i should do it but i don't but when i did do it before it, it bounced a whole, the file was so long i didn't need to do it normalize we want to turn that off we don't want no overload protection we don't want that on at all just just leave it normalize i think that if it does all sorts to your file when it's bouncing that you, you you ain't got no control over so you don't want to do that you can add it to your itunes if you want to put it straight into itunes which is a good thing mp3 if you click on mp3 it allows you to write your id free tags like your settings so you could give the song title you can put in the artist self-explanatory really what on the left side what you can put in the isrc is the uh, the code that you get for when you're putting your songs on itunes so that you get your right your royalties and stuff and get paid and you can put all all the information that you need to on there you can put the the key the song yeah it's quite useful so i'm just going to quickly bounce that down as an mp3 for now as it goes up bounces a, a wave file and i'm i don't think i'll add it to my itunes and it's not one of my, my best beats and i'll show you in real time so you click on that leave the save as that's your title what you're saving it as uh, getting started in logic pro x produced by your name my name and then you click bounce So I'll stop it there because I don't need the whole eight bars basically I want to so what I want to do is just give you a four bar loop and uh, I'm going to do this in offline just to show you what the difference is so you put it on offline click offline and then you hit bounce done obviously it's a lot quicker doing it offline but like I said you can't hear if there's anything wrong with the actual file that you're bouncing so yeah that's all that's getting started in logic pro that's the basics of getting started in logic pro i think i've covered more or less everything that should be covered or you, that you need to know to get started in logic uh, if there's something that i haven't covered or you're not too sure about please leave a comment in the box below and i'll i'll either tell you how to do it or i'll do a video to show you how to do it um yeah that's getting started in logic pro i, I appreciate your time I appreciate you watching this video if you liked it hit the like button subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with new stuff that's coming up and keep up with the progression of the, my channel 
Thank you for watching Music is Life. Peace.